Welcome to the Meat and Potatoes podcast. Today we're joined by Mike Ballard and Kevin Romney, who are the founders of Camino Verde Group. How are you, gentlemen? We're doing, doing great. Thank you, Garrett. Good. All right. So Camino Verde Group is a, a real estate and development company, and we are going to be talking about one of your uh, your projects, which is called Ephraim Crossing. Uh, I guess the name explains where it is, but um, uh, tell us what the project is. What is Ephraim Crossing? So Ephraim Crossing is a 126 acre uh, master plan community that we're building in Ephraim, which is about an hour and 15 minutes south of uh, the center of Utah County, and it's home to Snow College. And what we're trying to do is create an environment that's a walkable, livable, uh, new generation community for tech companies and other people to put remote offices uh, and have all kinds of amenities and services that'll benefit. Uh, yeah, we got to know each other at the golf tournament last year, and um, uh, we were pretty excited about it because it's an awesome place in the world, really beautiful place, great college there, and uh, I think the idea, is, the idea is great. Where did the idea come from? So uh, it kind of was a few years in the making. I was involved in a tax credit transaction for a company uh, that was growing fast in Ephraim, that was a snack manufacturer. And as I started going to Ephraim, everybody kept saying, there's no housing. There's no housing. I talked to the university, the president, and he said, I've made a couple offers to faculty and they, they've they accepted. And then when they try to find housing, they couldn't. And so they rescinded the offers. Oh, and so I heard that. And then uh, after, then I've talked to money sources about potentially making investments in, in Ephraim uh, from several folks in Salt Lake or Vegas or other places. And there seemed to be an appetite for it. So I called a realtor that I had met in my travels and said, hey, can you tie up some land? And one thing led to another and we're up to about 126 acres and uh, have put together something I think is uh, pretty nice. Awesome. All right, and then uh, Kevin, how is the uh, project coming along? What phase are the you? Project. So we're in phase one. Uh, we have broken ground on the 44 lot subdivision, and we plan to have homes available for purchase uh, by uh, late May, early June. And um, so we're very pleased uh, that that has happened. And then. Shortly thereafter, we plan to break ground on the office building uh, where we will invite uh, high tech uh, companies to come and, and rent there. And then uh, after that, we'll be starting on the townhomes. Uh, and Mike's sharing his screen there and has a cursor that uh, kind of showing you where that's at. So uh, 52 uh, townhome units along with a daycare uh, that will also be there to allow um, you know, uh, individuals to be able to help, uh, you know, take care of their kids uh, when husband and wife both work and be able to drop off at six o'clock in the morning, pick up at six o'clock in the evening, those types of things. Yeah, really cool. So I think the part that our audience would, would find uh, most intriguing is kind of the tech office and uh, kind of having an anchor tenant down there that's, uh, you know, a technology company. Uh, that's gonna be a key part of the project, correct? Absolutely, it is. And so uh, what, what phase would that be? So this is our office building. Our first office building is in phase one. We plan to start construction this year. Uh, our marketing, you know, part of why we sponsored the Silicon, Slope, the Silicon Slopes golf tournament last summer was to let companies know what we're doing and to try to get some that might be interested. And the marketing has worked. We've got our first company uh, that signed with us, a company called Green Seed Technologies out of Orem. And uh, they've got uh, several types of technology or sub-technology companies that are part of their group. Uh, Red X is one of their largest. They've got another one called Wave Technologies. 
And so they're going to, their plan is to move uh, over the next year and a half, 40 employees to Ephraim. The cost of living is significantly lower. Uh, they're really excited about the Snow College has started a four year software engineering degree. And they've already hired some people there. One of the executives grew up in Manti, just south of Ephraim, and went to Snow College uh, before transferring to Utah State. And so they're planning on bringing some folks back and uh, hiring from the college as well. I think they're planning on hiring at least five of the graduates uh, this May. And, you know, so this is our phase one. And uh, actually, let me show the next slide as well. Uh, so we'll have a bank pad in front and then townhomes behind it. Um, and it's right on Highway 89, the main drag. Gotcha. So this is fantastic, right? Because it's a circle of life. We don't have enough housing or we want some anchor tech companies. Um, this nice little community, 126 acres, solves that and more. Um, and, you know, it's not, it's not rocket science, but if you can, you know, in 2021, look around the corners as, as you guys have done, it, it all works in a nice little ecosystem. Right. You know, exactly. what's, what's interesting in Provo, I've got three children uh, that live in Provo or Lehigh. And uh, my daughter's planning on buying a townhome in Provo, 1,800 square feet, three bedroom, two bath, no, three bedroom, three bath, uh, right in the core of Provo. And it's $575,000, mm -hmm. right? Where we have a three bedroom, two bath home uh, in Ephraim, it'll probably sell for $325,000. Right. So and in the days of COVID and telecommuting, you know, people can work from home and enjoy the rural lifestyle of Ephraim, uh, you know, on, on, on much uh, uh, lower wages or, uh, and, and enjoy that rural lifestyle. So, yeah. Yeah. And we, we work a lot with our chapters throughout the state, some are in rural areas and, and that is going to, be a fantastic model because a lot of people don't want to be up here. One, that a townhome costs five hundred thousand uh, dollars. Two, you know, the hustle and bustle is pretty busy. And then three, like Ephraim's way better for most things outdoors, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. This article, there was an article in the Deseret News almost exactly a year ago, last March, that basically surveyed what how people felt, what their challenges were or the things they wanted to be solved and traffic and congestion and air quality, crowding, affordable housing, this type of thing. Those were all the reasons why people had um, some concerns about that. And that's what, when I saw this article, this is what spawned us to buy more acres than what we had originally planned to begin with. Yep, that is a, a very accurate graph there. All right, so in addition to you guys, who, else, who are the other stakeholders in this project? So we have some, some of the local residents or business people are very helpful and supportive. When we had our ground opening, Snow College is uh, extremely supportive. They think we're a key part of their growth. Um, on just the housing part, they said, you're gonna provide housing for our faculty, our administrative people and our married students. Um, we're not really trying to provide student housing at all. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, the city has been very supportive. And um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of things going on. You know, the whole community has been really supportive. I'm showing you a slide now, or maybe it's, let me, am I showing it? No. Let me share the screen here. These, these are the, the renderings or the elevations of the townhome or the single family homes that we're selling everywhere from uh, two bedroom, two bath to a six bedroom, four bath home in the community, right? And you can buy this six bedroom, four bath, 3,400 square foot home with no basement for less than you can buy that town home I was talking about that my daughter's looking at buying. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. The upsides are, are pretty clear and uh, there will be a, a big group of people that that's what they want and that's where they want to live. And, uh, you know, obviously, 
if the uh, if the community is happy and involved, that means you've you've uh, you haven't overbuilt or won't turn uh, Ephraim into a little mini Wasatch Front, right? Because nobody right. wants that. No, no. But our our goal is if we could get our goal was to get one company in 2021, two in 2022, and and maybe get two more a year for the next several years. You know, I think we'll we'll have built something pretty special. Yeah. And uh, you know, helping the the thing that the mayor talked about, and uh, Spencer Harmon, one of the executives at at Green Seek Technologies, they both talked about the brain drain. In you know, they've got a lot of bright Snow College grads or people that grew up in San Pete County that there's no good jobs in town, so they have to leave. They have to go to Salt Lake or uh, Lehigh or California to get good jobs. And we're trying to create an environment where we have, you know, six to 10 quality, you know, software, pro software companies. Yeah. And then the retail and the lifestyle things that will support it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all things being equal, if you're writing code for Google or Microsoft or a company in Ephraim Crossing, if you're just a developer or product person, really doesn't matter, right? Uh, yeah. if, that's, if you just want the job, but then the upside is you get to live in Ephraim. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So, um, Kevin, what? who are some... Uh, some ideal candidates as far as companies in your mind that would uh, would be a good fit for what you guys are building? Well, as, as Mike mentioned, uh, Snow College just instituted their first two four-year degrees. One of them is in, in software engineering. And so they've got, you know, uh, I think their first year they had five graduates. This year they'll have 15 graduates. And so any of the high-tech companies that are looking for software engineers uh, and want to, to relocate and, and have a satellite office where people can work remotely. Maybe they head up to Silicon Slopes, you know, once a week, maybe twice a week, but they can work out of their homes uh, or they can go into the satellite office there and work from there. Uh, those are the individual, those are the companies that we think um, you know, we want to attract. Uh, those who want to provide their employees uh, the opportunity to have access to the outdoors and the great things that Ephraim has and the rural lifestyle. Uh, so those are the companies that we, we seek and, and hope to attract to, to come to Ephraim. Great. And if uh, those companies are listening, how, uh, how should they reach out to, to you guys? So we've got a website, ephraimcrossing.com, and we've got a contact page there. We've also got uh, um, our cell phones are on our website. Uh, as well. You can go to CaminoVerdeGroup.com and reach out to us there. Uh, one other thing I wanted to bring up uh, is that the Ephraim has some special designations that where there's some incentives for companies. Right. There, uh, the whole city is an opportunity zone, right? So if you were to create a spin-off company and start it in Ephraim, uh, with Opportunity Zone funds, and you held on to that business for 10 years, after 10 years, if you were to sell it, there would be no tax, right? So let's say you built a company that grows to be worth $100 million, and several uh, Silicon Slopes companies grow to much more than that, but let's say $100 because it's easy math. That would be a long-term capital gain to your shareholders, and so they would owe 25% tax. Or there'd be a 20, you know, if it sold for $100 million, it, it would generate 25 million in tax. But if it's an Ephraim and it was started as an Opportunity Zone funded company, then there's no tax. Yeah. Also, it, the, the city is an enterprise zone. It's a SBA uh, hub zone, which means the federal government earmarks about 5% of all government contracts to companies that reside in these hub zones. So you can have less competition going after federal contracts because you're in a hub zone. Yeah. It's also a new market tax credit district, which means you could qualify for uh, some financing that ultimately becomes forgivable debt. So we've done a transaction, uh, several transactions with companies 
in Utah and Nevada and even as far as Georgia, where a company could get, let's say, on an $8 million project, let's say it's a relocation, they can get $2 million in new market tax credit financing as a second. Let's say they get you know, $5 million of traditional debt, $2 million of new market tax credit debt, and they put in a million in equity. That new market tax credit debt is interest only for seven years. And after seven years, the debt's forgiven. Right. You know, and there's several businesses all up and down uh, the, the state of Utah, including I, years ago, I served on the board of the Utah Shakespearean Festival and the new Adams Theater was funded with new market tax credits. Yeah. And so it had $5 million of debt on it that will ultimately be forgiven, you know, and that's pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. If you're not good at math, $25 million is more than zero, but plus of all the incentives, zones, and credits, it sounds like you, you got them all triangulated in Ephraim. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Ephraim is a good college town that helped probably generate kind of those designations because the average income in a college town is generally smaller than other areas. And so, but okay. Ephraim, Ephraim is a great city. It's a simple, affordable lifestyle that you're close enough to Utah County to have all kinds of benefits there, but you're far enough away to enjoy a better quality of life and the recreation that the community can offer. Absolutely. Yeah, we're excited to see it. Look forward to taking a trip down there in the coming years and uh, there's a decent chance we maybe never return. We can just uh, post up down there. Uh, <laughs> We've got there some options go. for you right now. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, thank you so much for uh, sharing your expertise and uh, you know having the initiative to do a cool project like this and for your time this afternoon. Gary, Great. thanks Our for having place. us on the podcast. We appreciate thank it. Very much. Thank you.